On your Tuesday episode of Locked on Raptors, it's all about the WNBA. The Toronto Raptors are apparently interviewing Becky Hammond. Do they have a shot at hiring her? Or is she just going to stick with the Las Vegas Aces as she probably should? Plus, we'll get into WNBA expansion, Toronto's potential of being one of those places where the WNBA expands to, and as well, the WNBA Canada Exhibition Game this Saturday. We'll do it all with Karina Mustafa of Homestand Sports. Let's get to it. Thanks for hanging. You are Locked On Raptors, your daily Toronto Raptors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Raptors, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Tuesday, May the 9th, and I'm your host, Sean Woodley. I've been covering the Toronto Raptors now for nine seasons on various platforms. You can find all my work over on Twitter at Woodley Sean. If you're still on Twitter, don't still be on Twitter. What are you doing? Uh, go follow the show on Instagram, Locked On Raptors. Go to the Locked On Raptors Discord, which is really fun. Come hang out. We're just talking ball. We're talking about the playoffs and Zelda this Friday when it drops it's going to be great so uh the link is in the description for both audio and video listeners of the show jump on in there come hang out it's a rocking good time it's also wonderful when you support the show by supporting it uh following subscribing rating reviewing all that good stuff yeah support it by supporting it you heard what i said <laughs> uh thank you in advance for doing that today's show is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on nba for 20 bucks off your first purchase last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed all right let's get to it talking wnba stuff today on the show from the tie-ins with the raptors via becky hammond to expansion toronto continues to be named on a list of teams or cities that may or may not get a team in the wnba someday we'll see uh plus there's a big game going down this saturday Chicago Sky, Minnesota Lynx at Scotiabank Arena. I'll be there, and the woman on the show today will be covering the game. It is Krina Mustafa of Homestand Sports. Enjoy b-ball, the whole internet. Krina, how the hell are you? <laughs> I love that you said the whole internet. That's so funny. <laughs> I, I'm just saying facts. I don't know what to say. You're you're a superstar. It's uh, it's. I'm very glad you're punching down and hanging out with me today. Let's put it that way. I'm not punching <laughs> down. Get out of here, Sean. <laughs> All right. Well, Karina, we got a lot to dig into today. Uh, we'll start with the Raptorsy stuff. We'll get into the expansion and the preview of the super fun exhibition game going down this Saturday that is sold out, by the way. It's going to be incredible in there. But uh, let's start with Becky Hammond. Um, we know, of course, from the reporting from Adrian Wojnarowski that Becky Hammond is among the uh potential candidates for their head coaching job who they have at least been er granted permission to speak to or interview haven't heard much since that first report obviously becky hammond spoke about it last week with her vegas aces availability saying we're not going to talk about those boys uh and the timing of it all feels as though this probably isn't going to work out for the raptors in their pursuit of becky hammond as much as she is very high on my list of potential candidates for a million different reasons uh it just She's a defending champion coach. The season is starting in, what, days? And mm -hmm. it just feels like it's not going to quite line up timing-wise and, frankly, opportunity-wise for Becky Hammond. Why would she go from a champion WNBA team to the Toronto Raptors? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I'm not here to speak on other of the people's motivations. Maybe she's ready for the jump, uh, yada, yada, yada. But doesn't seem like it's going to line up. K Karina... Do you think there's any chance of this going down, or is this a situation where the Raptors would have to be like the pitchmen in this situation and would have to pitch the like p pitch their asses off essentially to get Becky Hammond to make the jump from the Vegas Aces to the Toronto Raptors at this time? And that'd be pretty hard. <laughs> but, uh, just on the timing aspect, like let's put this in perspective. The WNBA in recent years had had like around 30-ish, 36 games in the season. They've mm -hmm. now expanded the amount of games to 40 mm -hmm. uh, this upcoming season. So already that season is going well into August, well into September. And then you have Becky Hammond coaching the Las Vegas Aces, who are the defending champions, who got better in the offseason by adding Candace Parker to their roster, who's arguably <laughs> probably one of the best WNBA players of all time, which means most likely they're going to have a deep postseason run, and that's mm -hmm. going to run into October. What happens in October? The start of the NBA season. <laughs> to me, to have somebody who's 
coming in as your head coach, you wouldn't want them coming in late because they're such an integral part of your team and your roster. They're supposed to be meeting with the players. They're supposed to be planning out different things upcoming season. So that to me is like the first part where I'm like, she has her hands full. Yeah. Um, and she's not just going to walk away from this season with days to go before the start of it to join the Raptors and start scouting 13th overall picks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, and also, like, honestly, the whole discussion around this is like, everybody keeps saying how the NBA has more money or it might be better. But to me, at least, like, she's already making a million dollars a year. Um, sure. Yeah. As head coach of the Las Vegas Aces, she has a family. She has two small kids. Um, she's probably built her life uh, on the west in the west side um, yeah. of the states. And so, moving to Toronto is a big ask. You've seen like so many head coach uh, candidates are turning down Toronto just because <laughs> it is Toronto. Um, well, let's hold up, Ime Udoka. Like, okay, buddy, uh, I'm going to take <laughs> the Rockets, the team that makes no sense at all with all these players who stink. Yeah, this Listen, is. I, the, I wanted to build the, this outside the team. I meant just like <laughs> geographically. Okay. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, the Udoka thing drove me nuts. It's like, buddy, you are in no position to like talk okay. about choosing jobs. Carry we, on. We don't want him here anyway. Don't worry about that. Um, but. I don't know. It's just all of these factors where, to me, it feels like the reasons not to come here overweigh mm-hmm. the reasons to come here. Because, like, we know she has experience in the NBA. She served as an assistant coach under Pop for, like, seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, she she has that connection to Jakob Pertl if Jakob Pertl is still on our team. So, like, there mm-hmm. is stuff like that. Um, but when she comes out and she's like, I'm not talking about them boys, that's also <laughs> something where I'm yeah. like, I don't really think she's thinking about that right now. Yeah, and I suppose like the the counter argument as well. She you know granted permission. She she cleared the the decision to get interviewed. Yeah, you should do that. Like NBA team comes calling, you should definitely talk to them. But it, no under not no obligation to take that job. And I, I guess this is not even necessarily connected to Becky Hammond. And I was going to ask you sort of about what Becky Hammond would bring to the table as a coach. But I feel like, A, we kind of know that. She's been in the sort of ether for 10 years now as like a potential NBA coach. And so I think we got a pretty good, you know, read on what she brings. We've seen her in the head job with the Aces, all of that. Um, And it doesn't seem like the Raptors have a shot in hell of making this happen. So maybe it's more interesting to ask, is the Raptors job attractive, Karina? Like, do you think just like... You know, obviously, it's not like the sexiest of jobs right now with all the sort of uncertainty and pending free agents and stuff. But I I don't feel like there's a situation. Obviously, the Hammond thing is its own thing with lots of other extenuating circumstances. But I don't look at the Raptors job as being like this. Oh, God, can't touch that one. That's like a nightmare job. It's not the Houston Rockets. Uh, So uh, do you think it's an attractive job? This is actually a mailbag question we got from a listener a couple weeks back. So I'm glad we can weave this back in because it is, uh, I think, an interesting question. I don't think it's a nightmare, but I don't think it's very attractive as of right now, because Mm -hmm. for me, at least the way that I'm looking at it is, yes, you need a new head coach, but you also need to change up this roster a little bit and figure something out. Mm. So the way that this is going to become attractive is if you bring in a head coach that is willing to like, get their hands dirty in reshaping mm-hmm. this roster or figuring out which guys you're keeping and what what this Raptors team actually needs to succeed because obviously nobody wants to be a mid-tier team or a team that isn't even making the playoffs. Sure. Um, so I think it, it really is going to depend on the personnel that you bring in and who's going to be the most willing to work with this roster and change it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I come down on there's 30 of these jobs in the world, and like there's there's no unattractive NBA head coaching job. Even the worst head coaching job is still an NBA coaching job, and like we know how it works in the NBA too. You get one look, and all of a sudden you're on interview list for the next 25 years. Like it's a you know it's a it's a place you want to get your foot in the door probably. Um, but yeah, this is. Um, this coaching search feels a lot weirder than the last one because the last one it felt like okay they, this is like their last move to try to put themselves over the top they got to get a tactician who has the strengths that Dwayne Casey did not 
I think I know what they want here. Like they want someone who's going to come in, like command respect, be able to kind of manage the room, manage the personalities, uh, maybe play a less insane style of defense, you know, just (laughs) small things like that. Um, But it is like a hard thing to pin down as to like who the exact right person is going to end up being. And I think we're in for the long haul with this search. I think it's going to be quite some time before we get any resolution on it. Uh, But yeah, I think we can pretty much safely say It's going to be a shocker if Becky Hammond ends up the coach of the Raptors as much as that would be one of the very best outcomes, I think. I just, I don't really see that happening. And I don't think the Raptors are in a position right now where they can make that pitch. You know, they get Victor Wembenyama in the draft. Sure, maybe you go back and give Becky a call. But um, it doesn't feel like that is uh, A, happening. And B, there's just not enough juice there to be like, all right, walk into this team now. We don't even know what the team is, but good luck. (laughs) And so... Yeah, because then you're setting her up for failure. Exactly, uh, yeah. There's this like extra context that comes with that with being a woman as well like as much For as sure. it's uncomfortable it's just i i don't feel comfortable pushing somebody like that into a yeah. into a situation like that yeah and again look can't speak for people's motivations maybe becky talks to mr ujiri and bobby webster and is like this is the thing i gotta do and by all means go nuts that would be awesome but i just i think it's might maybe a pipe dream for those hoping to see it happen and uh maybe next time around uh let's come back on the other side karina we're gonna dig into wnba expansion as toronto Keeps being on lists, lists and lists and lists, but no expansion as good players keep on getting cut from rosters because there's not enough roster spots. We'll get to that on the other side here. But before we do that, let me tell you about our friends over at Game Time, the place where you can get last minute tickets for cheap, baby. It should not be difficult or stressful to buy tickets to see your favorite sports teams. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer last minute deals and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you're going to have. For example, this Saturday, it's sold out from all, but I'm sure the secondary market's got some stuff going around for Chicago, Minnesota this Saturday in Toronto. Uh, so if you want to try to get last minute tickets for that, Game Time is the place. And you can also get yourself 20 bucks off your first purchase, perhaps of WNBA tickets for Saturday. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked on NBA for $20 off. Game Time. It's the place to go right now for last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, we continue on here. Karina Mustafa of Homestand Sports along as we power through your first listen of the day. Thanks as always to the everydayers tuning in. If you are an everyday listener of the show, let us know in the comments uh, so again, we can get you some help. Uh, All right, let's uh, (laughs) dig into WNBA expansion, Karina. This is a thing I feel like we've talked about on this show before. This is a thing I feel like I've been thinking about for like 10 years and (laughs) it hasn't quite come to fruition just yet, but it feels like we're getting close. I I guess the place to start with this is the WNBA is having their first game in Canada this Saturday. Does this, do you think, portend something as as it pertains to expansion down the line? Like, I I feel like they, they didn't choose this destination for an expansion or for an exhibition game just like willy nilly. There's gotta be some sort of intention behind it, no? So if I was somebody who wanted to buy a WNBA team and I wanted it to be in Toronto and I wanted Kathy and the W to expand, my pitch would be, look at this game upcoming on Saturday. It's a Mm -hmm. preseason game. All preseason games are not televised. This is the only preseason game that's being televised. It's sold out an entire arena, the whole thing, not just the lower bowl, the entire Mm -hmm. thing. Like it's an NBA NHL arena. It's sold out. Everybody is excited. This is the kind of thing you can expect if you were to bring a, a, a WNBA team here in Toronto. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. would be my pitch. Um, I think, honestly, like this preseason game is going to help. But mm-hmm. again, as we've like said multiple times, it's up to the W to stop stepping on their own feet when it comes to this. <laughs> because all we've seen is like, there's 20 cities, there's 10 cities, there's five. Now we're back to 20. Now we're back to 10. Like, to me, I look at a league like the NWSL, who's basically mm-hmm. like expanding like every single week. And I look mm-hmm. back on art and on the W and I'm like, what's happening? What, why, yeah. why not? <laughs> like what, what is going on? <laughs> um, and obviously like they've like 
they've grown their charter program this season, not by much, but it's something. So maybe hopefully that's something that can continue to grow. And if that helps, and then with the next CBA negotiation, maybe some things can be worked out so that it's easier to expand. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe that's like increasing the number of roster spaces on a team. Like that would be incredibly useful too, because right now we're in players getting cut season. And uh, it's honestly very hard to watch, especially when, like if a team is getting too deep in one spot, if they're getting too deep in the guard spot and you're seeing talented guards get cut, like that's, you Mm -hmm. never want to see that. Yeah. It's, you know, uh, Natasha cloud yesterday tweeting about this. Like we need more teams. There's a lot of these players deserve to be on a roster. This stinks. Like there have been like first round picks who have been cut in recent years, just because there's, there's no room on these rosters. Like, it does feel like time is of the essence here a little bit. Like the more you wait year over year for expansion, the more players are going to have their shot at making a living out of this kind of dashed just because of kind of dragon heels. Is there like, by your estimation, is there a reason why it's taking so long to get to this point? Like, is there any sort of like, okay, we're all impatient, but like, I understand the process of it all. Like it, it, doesn't you mentioned the nwsl like it it seems like plenty of leagues were able to expand kind of whenever they please Mm -hmm. why do you think it's been such a process for the wnba to try to uh find these new locations to move cities listen i'm not in those rooms i have no idea what conversations Mm -hmm. they have um to me it just stems from an issue of organization within the leadership of the league itself Mm -hmm. I don't know who's making these decisions. They're just bringing Kathy Engelbert out to like say the same PR stuff every single time. (laughs) And it feels like we get the same quote from her every single time about expansion. So it's just a matter of honestly being more transparent as well with the fans and with the media um, and with the players too, Mm because they, because they, they feel like, I feel like they're just as confused as why, like as we are um, Mm -hmm. sometimes. So I don't know. Maybe it's something that they need to work out with the Players Association, like I said before, like the next CBA negotiation. I'm not sure when it's coming up because the most recent one was pretty recent. But and mm-hmm. maybe in the next like three to five years, I'm hoping. Yeah, it would be awesome. Like like you said, it would be enormous in Toronto. I, I, I have no doubt it would be hilariously successful and notably extremely lucrative for whoever decides to put a team here i guess my last thing on this karina is obviously we're in toronto we all assume well obviously toronto's the place to go look at us we're like the best basketball town there is and there are plenty of other cities who want wnba franchises who would say the same thing we're the place to bring a team bring a team back to charlotte you know bring uh all this stuff like there, there's all sorts of i think oakland or, or san francisco mm-hmm. is currently um uh, high on the list all of this what is the sort of like is it a pipe dream that we're all just like yeah toronto's obviously the place like it it doesn't just feel like it's like hometown bias right like it feels so obvious as like a move for the league that would expand its profile and, and really help it kind of you know hey the, just having more teams helps one problem that we've talked about the the sort of the, the roster squeeze and all of this but it just feels of all the different cities you can throw out there that's the one that you kind of circle with like red marker it's like oh my god that would be incredible no like this isn't just hometown bias thinking our town's the best and we're the center of the universe <laughs> no see <laughs> unlike becky hammond to the raptors this isn't a pipe dream <laughs> um but yeah no i think it's extremely realistic uh i mean just look at the the raptors success here Mm -hmm. i think they also have to take into account like having one team in canada to begin with would actually be extremely helpful with the Mm -hmm. amount of people that would support the team and bring attention to the w as well because the more you expand the more eyes are going to be on the league itself um and I like maybe it is a little bit biased, but I actually, in my objective opinion, I think Toronto is pretty realistic. I think once they do expand, they should probably do it like a couple teams at a time. Like it shouldn't yeah. be like a one one thing because then they like they have so many things to work out. You might as well just do it by a couple at a time. Yeah, that seems uh, you just get it done. Just get in there. Just there's a team now. We started like that's how this is easy, right? I should work in sports management. Uh, we're gonna come back on the other side, round things out, and uh, take a look at the game going down this Saturday. Chicago Sky, Minnesota Lynx. 
in Toronto. We'll get the need to knows from Karina as uh, this should be a ton of fun. We'll get to that in just one sec before we dive on into that. However, got to tell you about our friends over at Prize Picks. Daily fantasy sports has never been easier, more fun, or more accessible. And Prize Picks makes it so simple. If you're someone who doesn't like the season long grind of fantasy sports like me, Prize Picks is perfect because you can just go on a given night and pick two to six players on a given entry, and whether they'll get more or less than their given projection in a certain stat, whether it's points, rebounds, assists, all on down the list. And it's not just basketball. You can go cross sport as well. So maybe you're a hockey fan and a baseball fan and a basketball fan and want to have multiple players from each sport on an entry on a given night. You can do that. And if you win, uh, you can win up, that is, to 25 times your money on any entry if you get them all right. And it's not just the big four sports either. It's literally every league you could possibly think of you can go and play via prize picks at WNBA, women's co- college basketball, soccer, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, MMA, and all the rest. Go check them out right now over at Prize Picks. And if you download the Prize Picks app, go to prizepicks.com and sign up and play daily fantasy sports, you are going to receive a 100% instant deposit match if you use the code locked on, meaning if you put 100 bucks in your account, Prize Picks will just match it. Drop 100 bucks in there to match it and hang out with your money so you can go and play with that extra hundo as well. Just use the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with Prize Picks. All right, rounding out the show here, final segment, Karina Mustafa from Homestand Sports is along as we dig into Chicago, Minnesota, this Saturday. Look, Karina, this is very likely going to be the first exposure to the WNBA for a lot of folks. Uh, You know, myself, I try my very best to keep up with the WNBA in the summer, but I also like to not think about basketball when the Raptors season is over. So it's sort of a, uh, you know, I'll catch the games that are really big and I'll, you know, mind box scores and stuff like that. But I'm not kind of digging into the nitty gritty on Wednesday night matchups between, say, Chicago and Minnesota. Of course, they're playing on Saturday this time around. I, I guess sort of what's the uh, the overall like pitch to enjoy this game between Chicago and Minnesota players to watch that type of stuff for maybe the uninitiated who are going in with a cursory knowledge of the WNBA, but maybe are kind of getting their first real exposure to the league. Of course, the two Canadians headline Minnesota, Natalie Achanwa, Bridget Carlton. Um, but uh, yeah, curious sort of what's the, the sort of Coles notes elevator pitch on this game and the players to kind of keep an eye on here. <clears throat> Both teams are in a very interesting position heading into the season on the Chicago sky side. Um, so they won a championship in 2021 and that was when they had Candace Parker. They had Courtney Vandersloot, Allie Quigley, uh, Clea Copper, all on the same team. Uh, it was an incredible run, but now we've shifted with this team where Candace is gone. Vandersloot is gone. Allie Quigley sitting out for the, for the rest of the season. Um, and now you have Clea Copper, who's been handed the keys to this team. So mm-hmm. to me, she's a must watch. She didn't play in their previous preseason game, but that was most more like most likely a team decision. You know how sure. they decide who plays, who doesn't. I'm gonna assume she plays in this game just because it's the Canada game, like it's in front of so many people, <laughs> and it's like a little bit more important. Um, but like to me, Kalia Copper is the must watch factor for the Chicago sky. Um, For those who aren't familiar with her game, she can pretty much score in any way you want. Um, She's super, so unlike any player on the Toronto Raptors, got it. Uh. Uh, Yeah. You know, you know what? The Raptors could actually use her to be honest. Uh If we're we're being honest here. Oh, shot Uh, creation. No, not in that arena. (laughs) Oh God. Not the Scotiabank curse. Anyway. (laughs) Um, so yeah, so she's the exciting part for me. There's also Dana Evans. She's a young uh, player who's going to be really, really uh, good too. And then on the Minnesota side, it's so funny because we always talked about how we have like three Canadians in the league. We had uh, Kia Nurse, uh, Bridget Carlton, and Ali Chanwa. Now we have four Canadians because Letitia Amma here is on the Atlanta Dream. Um, so that number is going up. I love it. <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, they're also at an interesting spot because. Some people might argue that they should tank this year for a higher pick next year, but they did just draft uh, Diamond Miller at number two this year, who is gonna, who is a really good player. Um, and I think if they continue to build around Nafisa Collier, who is kind of like their focal point um, on the links, then they could become a really good a, a playoff team. 
Um, mm-hmm. So both of these teams are both young. They're looking for like leadership in kind of like the next generation, because even with the link, Sylvia Fowles legend retired uh, last year. So both of these teams are now looking for like a new identity, um, which I think is pretty fun. It seems as though the uh, the tank battle this year in the WNBA could be yeah. rather interesting. <laughs> uh, right now, looking at a 24 WNBA mock, Caitlin Clark, pretty awesome. Angel Reese, pretty awesome. Paige Beckers, Beckers, yeah, pretty Beckers. awesome. Cameron Brink, Aaliyah yeah. Edwards, yeah, Canadian, um, <laughs> and th- that's that's quite a top five. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, is that going into this season? Like, do you think that's going to be a through line of the year? Is uh, we should maybe kind of stink if we can to try to <laughs> land one of these potential stars coming out of the draft next year? It's funny because I don't think any of these teams actually want to stink on purpose, but uh, <laughs> we'll see who what actually happens. It's like the Raptors see. looking at Victor Wembanyama and being like, we're going to trade for Yakup Pertl, which I agreed with, by the way, but you know, <laughs> some people did not. So it's going to be interesting. Next year's draft class is extremely, extremely talented. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see who actually is one of the worst teams in the league this year. Do, do you have a, uh, I mean, might as well do it. WNBA predictions. What you got? What you got? Like a, a finals um, MVP. What, what's your sort of going in here? What's your read on the season? I think the aces are going to repeat. Mm-hmm. I it's so tough for me because like the Liberty are so good on paper and then mm-hmm. also the Washington Mystics are also a sleeper team where they have Elena Deladon being healthy and she said she's feeling as strong as ever and honestly a team with a healthy EDD is a really scary one could be a problem <laughs> could be a problem <laughs> um but honestly like me I think aces might repeat as for finals MVP <sighs> It's so tough because they're so deep. I can't even Mm -hmm. like, I can't, I don't even have like a regular MVP prediction for the season. Cause like, if you look at the aces, like they have Asia Wilson, Candace Parker, Chelsea Gray, they have Jackie Young, Kelsey Plum, like that already in itself is like how many of them can score in the Mm -hmm. ways that they want Mm -hmm. to. And they play good defense as well. And then even on the New York Liberty side, cause those are kind of the two teams that are projected to be. Sure. The, uh, the top two where they have Brianna Stewart, they have Benajia Laney, Sabrina Ionescu, they have John Quell Jones, former MVP. Like it's insane to me just how deep each of the, and they have Courtney Vandersloot now. So like they, they're so deep. And like, so I, I'm going to hold off on the predictions, but <laughs> so uh, what you're saying is <laughs> all the two best teams are too loaded. All the MVP votes are going to be split and Nafisa Collier is going to win MVP. And therefore people have seen the WNBA MVP in the flesh on Saturday. Is what you know you're what? I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if the MVP this year wasn't on the aces or the Liberty. Just yeah. based on depth, like maybe it's like some some team who does really really well behind those two, um, and somebody like really sticks out, and so yeah, maybe that mm-hmm. maybe that could happen. Maybe well, yeah, it's like how do you give it. MVP to Steph and, and or KD, right? Like it's kind yeah. of the same issue where it's going to be like, well, these are all the best players. How do we allocate these votes? It's going to be tough. Yeah. Either way, should be an awesome WNBA season. I know for sure. Like I've got my WNBA league pass. I- I'm very excited. It's like maybe the best deal in sports. <laughs> like it's insane. I, I don't even charge, have NBA League Pass, but charge I have me my more. WNBA yeah, like charge me more WNBA whoa, 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 and put it in. Whoa, whoa. No, but like use the money to expand to Toronto. Uh, <laughs> we don't have that kind of money, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, either way, uh, it's uh, it's going to be an awesome year. Really, really awesome that the game is going to be in Canada first time. In history, the commercials they've been running for it are just making me tear up every time they come on. Uh, fantastic stuff. Karina, where can people check out all your work? And will you have anything in particular coming out around the game Saturday? <clears throat> so you can find me. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, at- pointing at the stuff on the screen for the video, for the audio listeners. We're oh, trying to point at our names on the screen. It's very hard. I'm very bad at it. See, I pointed at mine there. I'm, I'm I at I got Karina Karina's. MM. There you go. MM yeah. On Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually so funny. I didn't think about that. Um, <laughs> but I I should have. So I just became the WNBA writer for Enjoy Basketball. And Hell yeah, you did. Yeah. So go subscribe <laughs> because I'm going to have a weekly WNBA segment in that newsletter. And I'll have awesome. something out on Friday before the Canada game. 
outstanding uh have the best time covering the game i'll have the best time drinking 47 dollars beers in the stands <laughs> very excited as well that's not an exaggeration no it's not i haven't yeah if <laughs> don't don't buy the booze at the game uh do your drinking before is my best <laughs> advice before sporting events that's what i've learned in my adult age uh we're gonna leave it there though karina this was awesome thank you so much for hanging out everyone go follow all of karina's incredible work uh she's a superstar uh, uh and, uh, like, just taking over the world, which is very, very, very heartening to see. You can find me at Woodley Sean. Follow, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. You can also go and uh, support the podcast by following and uh, all that good stuff. Did I say that already? I feel like I repeated myself. Follow it's the okay. show. People I'm... need a reminder. So we're recording a little earlier today than I typically do, and I haven't <laughs> finished one coffee. I'm normally two coffees in by the time I record, and so I'm a mess today. Uh, either way, do the things I ask you to do every day. Support the show, follow, rate, review, find me on Twitter, go to Discord, join the Discord chat, all that good stuff. And we will be back again tomorrow as uh, I'll be solo, and I think I'm going to run through some of your honorable mention best things that happened this season. There was lots of good chat in the Discord yesterday after I, we, Vivek and I dropped the episode on our favorite things about this season, and there were some honorable mentions, so we'll dig into those, dig into some you know news updates and maybe a couple of mailbag questions on tomorrow's show. If you haven't listened, go back and listen to yesterday's show with Vivek, where we dig into the top five things that happened this year that did not suck. Uh, all right, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much, and uh, have a good one. Thanks for hanging. Bye-bye.